Welcome to Fresh Forensics, your go-to destination for everything Linux. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're into tech, networking, or just love diving into the details of wireless connectivity, then you're in the right place. Today we're talking about ad hoc mode on a Wi-Fi adapter, one of the most interesting and useful ways to set up a wireless network without the need for a traditional router. And trust me, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned network pro, understanding ad hoc mode will totally change the way you think about Wi-Fi. First, let's answer the question, what exactly is ad hoc mode? What exactly is ad hoc mode? In the simplest terms, it's a wireless mode that lets devices communicate directly with each other without needing a router or access point. That's right. Instead of relying on a central device like a router, ad hoc mode allows devices to form a peer-to-peer -peer network. It's a device-to-device -device connection. Think of it as a Wi-Fi party where everyone connects directly without any gatekeepers. Ad hoc mode is often used for temporary or small-scale networks, like when you need to share files, play games, or collaborate on a project. Now, let's dive into how ad hoc mode actually works. Typically, when you connect to Wi-Fi, your device acts as a station, the client, connecting to a central device, usually a router. But in ad hoc mode, both devices act as stations that communicate directly with each other. Once both devices are in ad hoc mode, they create a wireless network using a specific SSID, the name of the network, and they can begin sending data back and forth. No need for a router or even an internet connection. It's all about direct device communication. So why would you want to use ad hoc mode? Well, there are a few really cool use cases where this comes in handy. First up, file sharing. Let's say you need to transfer large files between two laptops. Instead of using USB drives or complicated software, you can set up an ad hoc network and boom, instant direct connection for fast local file transfers. Ad hoc mode is also great for local multiplayer gaming. Want to play a game with friends but no Wi-Fi router around? Ad hoc mode lets your devices connect directly without needing an internet connection or a router. And for those of you working in teams or collaborating on projects, ad hoc mode can help you create a quick and temporary network for sharing documents, screens and resources, even if there's no internet around. Now, if you're familiar with how Wi-Fi networks normally work, you've probably heard of infrastructure mode. So what's the difference between ad hoc and infrastructure mode? In infrastructure mode, devices connect through a central router or access point. This is what most of us use in our homes or offices to get online. But in ad hoc mode, there's no central router. Devices connect directly to each other. It's a more decentralized and temporary solution. To put it simply, infrastructure mode is your go-to for long-term or internet-connected networks, while ad hoc mode is perfect for quick, direct device communication. First, open up your terminal and check your Wi-Fi adapters with the iwconfig command to make sure both your devices are recognized. Then, Use the IW tool to switch one of the adapters into ad hoc mode. Every command that I run on this machine, I am also going to be running on my other Linux machine, which is running Kali Linux. I will not be showing you the commands that I run on the Kali Linux machine as they are the same exact commands that I am running on this machine. There is only one difference and that comes to the IP address. You do have to specify a different IP address for each machine under the same net mask. Also, it is important to note that on both of these Linux machines that I am using, I am using alpha external Wi-Fi adapters on each one. However, the commands that I am demonstrating for you, you should be able to use these same commands on pretty much any Wi-Fi adapter regardless of the manufacturer of that adapter. The first thing that I'm going to do is verify that the adapter that I'm using does in fact support ad hoc mode. I do that by running the command IW list and if I scroll back up near the beginning of the output I'm looking for a section that is titled supported interface modes. This is the section right here and underneath supported interface modes 
we have up to eight different modes that you can enable on your Wi-Fi adapter. And the very first mode is referred to as IBSS. IBSS stands for Independent Basic Service Set. And this is essentially another name for ad hoc mode. So if you see IBSS under supported interface modes, you know that your adapter is able to support ad hoc mode. Next thing that I'm going to do is stop network manager. I'll do that by running the command sudo service network manager stop. Next thing I'm going to do is bring my interface down and in order to know which interface I am bringing down, I will once again run the iwconfig command and the interface that I am using to do this is specified right here, awus036achm. So to bring the interface down, I'll run the command sudo ip link set followed by the name of the interface and down. Once the interface has been brought down, I will now put it into ad hoc mode by running the command sudo iwconfig followed by the name of the interface mode add-hoc. Next thing I'll do is specify the channel that I want the adapter to be placed on. And I'm going to do that by running the command sudo iwconfig, followed by the name of the interface, and specifying the channel, which will be 1. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a network and I'm going to give that network a name of my choosing. I'll do that by running the command sudo iwconfig followed by the name of the interface and ESSID and then I'm going to give this network a name. I'm going to name it YouTube Demo. I am going to be applying very basic low-level encryption to the network, and that is going to be by utilizing WEP, which is a very outdated encryption protocol, but it is better than no encryption at all. So I will run the command sudo iwconfig followed by the name of the interface and specify key followed by the following series of numbers. And that is going to be my WEP encryption key. Next thing I'll do is bring the interface back up by running the command sudo IP link set followed by the name of the interface and up. And now that the interface has been brought up, we should be able to see the interface by running the ifconfig command. And we do see the interface right here. And because I have already done this, it did automatically specify the IP address that I used in the previous time that I did this. But I'm going to run the command unless so that you know how to do this. So to add the IP address to the interface, we run the command sudo ip adder addr add followed by the following IP address of 192.168.1.1 forward slash 16 dev and then the name of the interface which for me is awus036achm and as you can see that address has already been assigned. 
And now if I run iwconfig, we see that we have our interface. It is, in fact, in ad hoc mode. And I can also run iwdev. And we see that it is in ad hoc mode or type IBSS. And the SSID is YouTube demo. And we can also see that it is, in fact, on channel one. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do, which you will not see me do on camera, is I am going to run this same series of commands on my other machine, which is a laptop running Kali Linux. The only difference is going to be that the name of the interface is going to be slightly different. And when it comes time to add the IP address, I'm going to give it the IP address just as you see it here, except I'm going to change this one for a two. And that is going to be the only main difference that you have to pay attention to as each machine has to have a different IP address, but on the same subnet to be able to talk to each other. Okay, so I have finished running all of the commands on my Kali Linux machine. Another thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that if you are running a VPN that you have your VPN disconnected. I am typically running a Malvad VPN server, so I'll just very quickly check the status of that to make sure that it is not connected because that will interfere with you being able to connect these machines together in ad hoc mode if your VPN is active and running. So if I run ifconfig, I see that I have this IP address that I assigned to this particular machine of 192.168.1.1 and the IP address that I assigned to the Kali machine is going to be 192.168.1.2. So I should now be able to ping that machine from my Ubuntu machine. And if I ran every one of the commands successfully, we will have connectivity between the two machines. So if I hit enter, you do see that the ICMP requests are in fact being sent and received. If I do a control C, uh, we sent nine packets and received nine packets with 0% packet loss. So I have successfully connected both machines to one another using alpha external Wi-Fi adapters that have both been placed in ad hoc mode. Neither one of these machines is connected to the internet and neither one of these machines is connected to any router. This is a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network that I have created between these two machines and I have even been able to apply a basic form of low-level encryption. So now that both the machines have been connected to one another, let's go ahead and test out whether we can SSH into the other machine. So let me first determine if I have SSH up and running on this machine. I'll do that by running the command sudo service SSH status. And I do not currently have it running, so I'll go ahead and start that up and make sure that I have it started on the other machine as well. And with SSH running on both machines, I need to know the username of the Kali machine and the, the username is fresh and the other thing I'm going to need to know is the IP address of the other machine uh, so with those two things I can go ahead and run the following command SSH username is fresh and I'll do the at followed by the IP address of the other machine which is 192.168.1.2 and hit enter and it asks me for the password that is the login password of the Kali Linux machine with the user fresh. And I am now logged in to the Kali Linux machine under the user fresh over an ad hoc 
network that I created with two alpha external Wi-Fi adapters. You can see that we are logged in as fresh. The terminal prompt has changed to let us know that we are remotely connected to the other machine. And I can verify that a couple of different ways. Um, I can run uh, who am I and you'll see that I am user fresh and I can also cat out the contents of the OS release file and you'll see that this is Kali Linux version uh, 2024.4. If I open up another terminal, over on the right hand side I'm on my Ubuntu machine and I can cat out the contents of the OS release file and you will see that this is running Ubuntu 22.04. Once that's done, you'll have a direct link between the two devices and you're all set to start transferring files, playing games, or whatever your heart desires. Of course, ad hoc mode isn't perfect. There are a few limitations you should be aware of. First, range can be a problem. Since there's no central router acting as a hub, the devices need to be within close proximity to each other for a strong connection. Second, security can be an issue. Unlike infrastructure mode with encrypted Wi-Fi networks, ad hoc networks are more vulnerable if not configured properly. So you should be cautious about sharing sensitive data. And lastly, performance might not be as stable as a regular Wi-Fi network. Ad hoc mode can be slower because it's a direct communication link and the network isn't managed like a router-based setup. It requires more system resources as the physical network layout will change as devices move around, while an access point in infrastructure mode generally remains stationary. So, to recap, ad hoc mode is perfect for quick, temporary, peer-to-peer -peer connections. It's super useful when you want to share files, play local games, or collaborate without needing an internet connection or a router. It's not as secure or reliable as regular Wi-Fi networks, but for short-term use, it's a game changer. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Linux, cybersecurity, and hacking content. And as always, keep learning and stay fresh. I'll see you in the next video. Like that, bro. You like that? You like that? You like that? Uh -huh.